All right, let's get right into it. Welcome to the second two a day. I'm your host, Michael Bumpus. This is brought to you by Alaska Airlines. Um, two a day. You get me at 5.30. You get John Clayton, the professor at 11. That's a great combo. I like what we're doing. Had a good response yesterday. Hope you guys keep filing in. Keep shooting us questions. If you uh, have any questions, hashtag Ask Bump on Twitter. We'll get there. And um, keep asking questions here, and I'll get to them if I can. All right? First, again, welcome to the second two a day. I'm your host, former receiver and Coog, Michael Bumpus. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, guys, we're in pads again today. Let's talk about it. We got to go through our first three questions, though. I'm always going to start with a couple observations I've seen, and then I'm going to get right to your questions. So, like always, what did I see from practice? I'll tell you what I've seen from practice so far. Jamal Adams is for real. Okay, now we all know his accolades, right? Been in the league three years, two-time pro bowler, um, all-pro selection last year. This guy brings a certain energy to this practice that I feel like this team has been missing. Um, he had a pick six the other day, took it all the way to the house. Dwayne Brown tried to chase him down. We like seeing the old man at 36 go after Jamal Adams, but we know he's not catching Jamal Adams. That's the reason why they brought him to this team, to cause havoc, to cause turnovers, to blow things up. That's exactly what he's doing. As a Jet last year, he had 6.5 sacks, 10 tackles for loss, and 13 hits on the quarterback. That means he's aggressive. That means he's going to get after. Now the question is, how are the Seahawks going to use this guy? Are they going to play timid? Are they going to play that soft coverage that they're used to playing? Or are they going to use this new weapon that they have and really get after it? And I'm leaning towards the side that they're going to use this new weapon and get after it. There's no reason to having Jamal Adams back there and not using him. What I've seen out of Jamal Adams, just his approach to the game, he's always smiling. He's asking questions. He already has a handshake with like two or three guys on the team. So we know that he's getting acclimated. He seems like a perfect fit here. If you combine Jamal Adams with Quandre Diggs back there, that's lethal. I've seen Jamal Adams make plays, and I've seen him play fast. And I think that's what we want to see. We want to see him continue to play fast. If we want to, every day, we could, <laughs> we could make a list on all the things Jamal Adams are doing. Now, forget that. I don't need AirPods, man. I'm good. I'm old school, man. I'm 34. I'm old school. All right, but um, Jamal Adams is here to make plays, and that's what he's done so far. And he came into this organization humble. He said he's not going to be the starter. He's not, he, he doesn't know if he's going to start or not. Come on, Jamal. We all know that you are going to be the starter. But I like that he's coming in with that humble mentality. Okay? Uh, so that's what I've seen out of practice so far. Next question. What have I heard from practice? Or guys that I know who are at practice. Now, I've heard that uh, Benson Mayoa is the real deal. Now, he's one of those names where everyone's like, who is that guy? We need someone else. We need a big name. Benson Mayoa has been doing his thing. You hear Pete Carroll talk about him. He said he looks fast. He looks strong. This is the first time he's going to get a chance to start. Let's remember that. Um, he's bounced around. He was an undrafted free agent out of Idaho with, uh, with the Seahawks. Now, he leaves. He played for the Cowboys, the, the Cardinals, the Raiders. He's bounced around, and he's been a rotation guy. He was a rotation guy last year and had seven sacks. So if he's a rotation guy for the Raiders and has seven sacks, we should expect a little more out of him. He's going to be the guy. He's going to be a guy that these guys depend on. Now, if you haven't heard, Daryl Taylor's been hurt. Um, he's had, he has an issue there. So Alan Robinson, another defensive lineman that was drafted, is going to have to step up. You hear Puna Ford has been banged up a little bit. So he's going to have to lead the charge with this team. You have Bruce Irvin behind him, backing him up, who's going to play some end as well. But Benson Mayoa, I'm hearing, is the real deal. Pete Carroll went from calling this guy back in 2013, the kid from Idaho, because he went to the University of Idaho. Now he has a name. He is Benson Mayoa. He is a guy that you guys are going to have to pay attention to, and I think it's going to be easy. I really think he's going to bring some intensity to this defensive line. 28 sacks last year as a whole, not going to get it done, okay? Not going to get it done. But um, if you combine him and the other pieces that they added, I feel like it's going to jump up. I got uh, Miko. He says, her DJ Dallas is killing. Do you think Homer will get cut? No way they keep five running backs once Penny. You know what? I've heard the same thing. DJ Dallas has been balling. He's been balling. And if he plays better than Homer, Homer's on the bubble. It is what it is. 
you talk about those running backs, right? I'm kind of going off script here, but I think we're good, right? So you, you hear about the running backs. You got Chris Carson. You got Penny. Uh, you got Homer. You got DJ Dallas. Oh, and don't forget they signed a 1,000-yard rusher and Carlos Hyde as well. They're only going to keep four. And right now, DJ Dallas and Travis Homer are battling for that fourth spot. The messed up part about that is, is that DJ Dallas and Travis Homer were battling in college for that same spot, University of Miami. So if I'm Travis Homer, I'm like, dang, again, I got to compete with this guy again. But to answer your question, I think if DJ Dallas can contribute in the pass game and pass protection and the special teams, he has a chance to beat out Travis Homer. But we all know what Travis Homer brings to the table. Remember that fake punt last year? Grabbed it. 15 yards, 20 yards down the field, didn't step out of bounds, laid a guy over. So I like what both bring to the table. It's all about who gets through this thing healthy and who's more effective. All right, so answer the question. Let's go back to my third observation. What do I want to see from practice? I want to see Russell Wilson throw the ball 35 times in a practice. It's not going to happen because they script their plays or whatnot, but I just want to see this organization Give Russell Wilson the keys to the car. He's already got the keys to the car, but it's kind of like his parents put the GPS on it, and he's only allowed to go certain places, right? I got a daughter. I got kids. When they start to drive, GPS is on that car. That's what they're doing right now. They're like, look, Russ, yeah, you can drive the car, all right? But, hey, got to be back before 12. Don't put too many miles on it. At this point, I want to see him start in practice and say, look, Russ, this whole team period, we're going to start off with 10 straight passes. 10. Just go. Just do it. Not get away from where they're from or who they are. They're going to run the ball, but let's start getting ready to do that. Because you hear Russ talk. He goes, I want to play like the fourth quarter is every quarter. Because he understands that he's capable. He's ready to do this. I mean, Russell Wilson is one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the NFL. You got to argue that Patrick Mahomes is up there. But Russ has been doing it for a very long time. And I think he feels comfortable. He's to the point right now to where he feels like, look, hey, give me the keys to the car. Take off the GPS. Let me go. And what that looks like to me, when let Russ cook, right? All, all the let Russ cook people, raise your hand right now, all right? That means just let him make more decisions. Give him some RPOs. Let him throw the ball a bit more. And let's not go crazy. You still got Chris Carson, who rushed for 1,000 yards last year. You still have Carlos Hyde, who rushed for 1,000 yards last year. You still have Penny, who looked like he was making his way and getting acclimated to his offense and starting to make plays. So you got a three-headed monster back there. And going back to that first question, who is going to be the fourth guy? That's the question the Hawks have to answer. Who's going to be the fourth guy? Okay, so those are my three. Boom, boom, boom. Hit you with my three. Now let's get to your questions. All right, the first one. This is from Ben. What do you think of Freddie Swain and Aaron Fuller? Great question. I'm a receiver. I love talking about receivers. So uh, thank you, Ben, for shooting this question. What do I think about Freddie Swain? I watched film on the kid. We played for University of Florida, the Gators, down there in the South. I see a guy, when the ball's in his hands, he becomes electric. He's great going across the middle of the field. Um, He's a good route runner. But the thing I like about him the most is the intensity that he plays with. There are a lot of receivers out there who look really good, sharp. They catch the ball. They do exactly what they're supposed to do, but they don't do more. Right. And great receivers do more when the ball's in their hand. And that's what I see out of Freddie Swam. I think it's going to be tough. He has a tough road ahead of him. He's been banged up a little bit already during camp. But you got Metcalf, you got Lockett, you got Philip Dorsett. The, I, those are going to be your top three. Now you got David Moore, John Orsua, Freddie Swain, um, Aaron Fuller, like we just mentioned. Those guys are going to battle it out. But what I like about Freddie Swain is that he is explosive when the ball is in his hands and he's okay going across the middle. The middle can be a scary place for some receivers. You must keep your head on the swivel, okay? What do I like about Aaron Fuller? Playmaking ability. Not a, not a really big guy. He's about my size, 5'11", 6 foot, but he goes up and he grabs the football. He made a play against Eastern Washington in week one. I was at that game. I was actually in that end zone and he went up Grabbed in one hand, came down pretty, okay? I think he has tremendous ball skills. He can locate the football, and he can make the difficult catch. So with Freddie Swain, he's an explosive guy. He can make the tough catches, but not like Aaron Fuller, in my opinion. At least I haven't seen that on film. He's more elusive when the ball is in his hand. Aaron Fuller's going to go up and get that thing. 
He's a competitor. He plays with, uh, with a type of grit. The way that Freddie Swain runs with the football in his hands is the way that Aaron Fuller goes up and grabs it out the air. And yes, he is a dog. I am a coog, but game recognized game, and I ain't going to hate on a man. Not a young man. Definitely not. So that answers your question. Dave, I mean, excuse me, Ben, appreciate you, man. Next, we got Otto's dad. Otto's dad, huh? Okay. Do you think Clowney is asking too much, and do you think he will come back to Seattle? Is Clowney asking too much? Three sacks last year, three forced fumbles, a um, couple touchdowns on defense. He was asking 20 mil to start, bumped down to 17, probably got to 16. I think he's worth 14 to 15 million bucks. That's my opinion. I don't think he's worth 20 mil. I think he has the capabilities to be worth 20 million, but if you're going to pay a DN 20 million, he better have 9, 10 sacks. Uh, he, he better have 10, 15 hits on the quarterback. He's asking a lot because everyone realizes the athlete that he is. He does some things that a lot of guys can't do. I mean, you, you saw the pick six. You've seen the scoop and score. Uh, he, collapses, he collapses the quarterback. He does things that don't show up on the stat sheet. He does a lot of great things. But for him to ask for that much money, he's got to fill up that stat sheet, at least for it to make sense to everybody. Now, if you really dive in and you look at the film, you're going to see it and say, you know what, this guy's good to go. Uh, probably worth 20 mil, but because of his performance and his injuries, um, he was injured. He wasn't allowed to travel and, and work out for teams. He's got to bump it down a bit. All right. So that is what it is. All right. Let me look through and see what else we got here. What are the improvements? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking there, buddy. <laughs> there, buddy. Do you think Freddie Swain could be a return guy? Yeah, exactly. I think that's where he starts. I think that's where he makes the team. Uh, in the return game, um, just the way kind of Tyler Lockett made his impact. He started as a mainly as a returner, was a Pro Bowl returner at that, and then made his way onto the roster as a receiver. So it's all about getting guys comfortable in the league. Um, if you're not going to be a number one pick, first round pick, you're not going to get all those reps during camp. They don't have a preseason to work with. So what do you do? You let an athlete be an athlete, let him catch the ball, let him return. Let him be special. That's the one thing you can't teach in football. My uh, college coach, Coach Levenseller, Mike Levenseller, Levenseller at Washington State, he goes, look, I can teach you how to run a route. I can teach you how to read a defense. But once the ball is in your hand, you have to go for what you know. And that's exactly what you have to do with Freddie Swain if he gets an opportunity. Put the ball in his hand and let him go. He's already banged up in camp, so he's missing out on some reps. But you can't, you can't coach running. All right, that's why running backs, when you're coaching a running back, you'll go, look, we're going to press the B gap. This is zone right. We're going to press that B gap. There's a cutback lane. After that, just get north and south and do what got you here. All right, let's see what another one. You think DK will have bigger numbers than Lockett? That is a close one. I think he can, and he might. Who's the, who's the first receiver you're going to try to take away in this offense? It's Tyler Lockett. How do you do that? You're going to bracket him. You're going to put a linebacker over him. Then you'll put a safety over that linebacker and try to make his life hectic. What does that do? That leaves space on the outside or the other side of the field for DK Metcalf. Now, you're still going to have a safety over the top. You still got to deal with a corner, but that's one less backer you have to deal with. I think he is definitely capable, and I think it's a, it's a real possibility because teams are going to key in on Tyler Lockett early. But the great thing about that is if they key in on Tyler Lockett early, opens it up for DK. DK starts balling. They start keening on DK. Opens up Tyler Lockett. By the middle of the season, you don't know what you're going to do. You just got to play straight up and play some base defense. So I think there is a possibility. There is a possibility. And now you know what to answer your question. I say early he will have more success than Tyler Lockett because Tyler is going to get most of the attention. So early, I think, I think DK can have better numbers than Tyler Lockett. But I think eventually it's going to even itself out. And let's not forget Philip Dorsett. I'm hearing great things about him. I talked about him yesterday. Um, he, he can run every single route. He's going to open up uh, the field for these guys. And again, Greg Olson underneath for the tight end. I mean, come on. Look at the weapons on, that, on, the, on the perimeter for these guys. They got a lot of options. All right? Let's see what other questions you guys got. You put out there. What was that? Push come the shove. You win by playing D and running the ball. Plays all. Yep. Yeah, I'm with you. You got to run the football. That's what the Hawks do. That's what their personnel is built around running the football, especially when you have three running backs back there who are ready to go. Uh, yeah, you got to run the football, but I also think you got to let Russell Wilson do his thing. I mean, who, who's, who's not in Russell's corner at this point? 
If you've been a 12 all this time, you've seen the progression that Russell has made. And in year eight, he got even better, in my opinion. Let's see what he does in year nine. Let this guy go. Take the GPS off the car and let Russ drive that thing. All right, let me see. How many of y'all He says, hi, my name is Jonathan. The Seahawks are going to win the Super Bowl. I think they have an opportunity. I think they play in the tougher conference. The NFC is no joke. Uh, I think there is a possibility, but you got to get lucky when it comes to winning the Super Bowl as well. Not lucky in your scheme, not lucky in your play calling, really just staying healthy. And that was the issue with the Hawks last year. They just couldn't stay healthy. You look at that offensive line, guys were banged up. Um, your running backs were banged up late in the season. I mean, you got to have guys available. You got to be able to do the things that got, that, get, that got you there. And the Hawks try it, but at some point, a number two is a two for a reason, and a three is a three for a reason. All right, let's find one more question before we get up out of here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hey, Maximus24, I appreciate that compliment, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, guys, hit me with something. Come on, I need another question. Give me one more before I get out of here. What we got? What we got? <laughs> who, who wins the NBA Finals this year? Hey, Scott Darrow. This is a, this is a, um, a football uh, podcast here, man. A football IG live. But I'm going to say the LA Lakers all day because that's where I'm from. All right. <laughs> how many games do you think? How many games do you think the Hawks are going to win by John Ford? How many games? Last year, I had them winning 10 games and end up winning 11. And they won 11 games with a line that didn't protect and a defense that didn't get after the quarterback. I gave them 10, they won 11. So this year, I think they didn't get too much better on the line, but they got some fresh bodies in there. They have some depth, so I think that's going to help. Who's going to win that center position? We'll see. You got Finney competing for it. You got Posick competing for it. Um, We'll see. They're going to make a decision early when it comes to that center position. Uh, defensive line, you got a bit better. You drafted a couple guys. You bring in Vincent Mayoa. You still had Jaron Reed and Puna Ford in the interior. And then you bring Bruce Irvin down. So I gave them 10 wins last year. They got 11. I'm going to stick with 11 again. Um, I think it's going to take some time um, for this offensive line to really gel. So I think they're going to take some lumps early. I think the defensive line will be ahead of the offensive line because on defense, just be an athlete on that line. Just fill your gaps, be an athlete, play with some discipline, you'll be good to go. Offensively, there's a lot more precision that comes with it. Um, Combination blocks, guys pulling, communication. There's just more things that go along with executing at a high level on offense just because there's a lot of communication. On defense, you can really just get after it and just be dogs. And I expect them to do that, especially when on the back end you feel safe. When you have Jamal, you got Quandre, you got Quentin Dunbar, you got uh, Shaq on the other side. So, um... I think there's going to be some progress, but I think I'm going to stick with 11 wins. Stick with 11 wins with a possibility of 12. Let's not forget they play in the toughest division in football in the NFC West. So, uh, yeah, man, that's what I got for you today. The second two of days, this is Michael Bump as your host. I will be here every weekday, 530. Come holler at me. Don't forget, this is brought to you by Alaska Airlines, our sponsors. We appreciate everything they do. Two days tomorrow, check out John Clayton at 11. Holler at me at 5.30. I'll see y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one.